Okay. My name is Michael Pucciarelli, and I've been a professional photographer for 10 to 11 years. Started photography around 2010. I got an associate degree in 2013. And in 2015, I joined PPA, Professional Photographers America. And then 2017 and later, I started joining the affiliate clubs. And then in 2021, I received a craftsman degree, photography craftsman degree. And I also, the latest group I joined was American Society of Photographers. So I have a lot to teach tonight. And I love still life photography. I do it all the time. I like other photographers too. So tonight, we're talking about the white plexiglass table where how to use props with the light. And it's way easy to use props without adding another stroke. And I recommend that when you add a light before adding a, a stroke, add a prop like a white card and a silver card. And then I'll have illustrations on equipment, stuff you can buy in the store, and things you can make yourself. And then I'll talk about camera settings. And then I'm going to do a virtual demo where you'll be a virtual lab where I'll just do a demo and it's in now the YouTube live. So I'll email everybody the YouTube link. And then based on the images I take in the virtual demo, we'll have a virtual camera raw demo. And then we'll have a Photoshop CC demo. And then there's going to be a presentation on, you know, Adobe Camera Raw screenshots with more information for more clarification. And then I'll have a demo on Photoshop screenshots, part of the same presentation to, to help you understand Photoshop better. And you can always email me on, you know, at mputrelliart2016 at gmail.com. You can also connect with me in any group or Facebook or Instagram. These are all my still life tables where the nice focus will be the white plexiglass table. And it's in the big square. And I'll do another webinar on this table in a few weeks. But tonight, we're going to be talking about the white plex table, how to use a prop, and the many props you can use to get the effect that you like in a photograph. These are many lighting fires you can use with any table and that it also includes the white plexiglass table. To add light in a dramatic way, you can use a silver card, silver reflector. You can use a mirror. To add light in a soft way, you can use a white reflector, a white card. Black cards are great for taking away glares, for taking away too much light. Like when a strobe bleeds too much light. And plastic fusion scrims are great for a background, but also to soften the light on a strobe. And tonight, I'm be talking a lot about colorful gels and also in the virtual lab where you can change the color of a photograph with many gels. I'll talk about that later. And then there's medium-sized white plexiglass sheets where it can be used in many ways, like a small white plex table. You place the plex table on a cube, or you can just form like a wall where you shine the stroke through the plexiglass sheet and it's white. And that's also could help soften the light. And then the cinephil. Cinephil is black aluminum foil, and it's great for creating a snoot if you're on a tight budget, and practically everyone is today, but there's many ways. You could use cinephil in many ways. Then there's blinds for you know changing the natural light to get the effect that you like. And the last four objects: spring clamps, COG clamps, duct tape clip pins. They're all great for holding things that are listed above. And you can buy a lot of this at Art Store, Home Depot. You can buy some of this even at a drugstore like Safeway.
This is the white plexiglass table that I used. And I still use it today. It's not currently out of stock at Amazon, but they make new ones all the time. But you can also buy it at BH Photo or, or a fancy art store, but just be aware of the frame you buy because the Manfrotto frame is expensive. This is not the Manfrotto frame, but this frame's good. And it's still the same, you know, table I use today. And just, you know, please read the description very carefully before, you know, purchasing your plexiglass table. There are many ways to use the white plexiglass table. You can use it with one flash, you can use a flash and continuous, or you can just use it with continuous. You can use it with natural ambient light with the flash, with the strobe, or just with natural ambient light. Two things are important with the white plexiglass table. It's angle of camera, position of the lights, because the angle of position can determine what type of photograph you can create. Now, in the next set of slides, I'm going to talk about how to use one light with stroke with um, props and then two lights. And props are great for adding a light, you know, without using a strobe. This is one, you know, light. You have a light. This is great for food product, food photography, product photography. And you can have white cards on the side that bounce in light, silver cards on the side that bounce in light. Or you can have a strobe aiming at a 40 frag degree angle. Or you can put white cards, silver cards that bounce in light. You can have a strobe aiming at 40 frag degree angle. You could have white or silver cards on the side. And there's many ways you can use just one light. And you know, the white cards, silver cards are great for bouncing in light without using another strobe. This is another way to use just one light where you have a glass subject and the strobe is firing through the white scrim reflector. And you can angle the light, you can move the light back. You can put, you know, gels. I'll talk about that later. You do a lot just with one light in this setup. It's not to use two lights where you have two lights aiming at a 40 degree angle and you have white or silver cards, depending on what you want to do to bounce in light. Or you can have a light here, but you can have a light on top of the subject. Or you can have a light here, you can have a light on top of the subject. And you could buy it, you could put in white or silver cards to bounce in light and shadows. And sometimes you just may need to use another light, and I'll talk about that later. This is another way to use another light where this is an opaque subject, where if I just have this, this would be a nice silhouette. Then maybe I can put a silver reflector here, but that probably wouldn't be completely enough light, but you can have a light coming from here and you can put a silver card to bounce in light in the shadow. Or if the light's too harsh, you can just put a white card to bounce in light. And sometimes, you know, you just need to get another light. And this light is at a 40 degree angle. You can also have the light at this corner at a 40 degree angle, and you can have a white silver card to bounce in light. Or you can have the light at this, you know, coming this way, you could have light silver white cards over here. This is how to use three lights. This is how I started still at photography at Montgomery College, uh, 2015. Had been there a while because of the pandemic, but the last time I took a still life was 2017. But you have three lights. You have a light underneath, underneath the subject. And the ways you could position this for reflections. And I'll demonstrate that in the lab tonight. Then there's light coming at a 40 degree angle, and you have a light underneath. I'll talk about how to put gels to get colors. 
This is one way to add a gel. We have armature clamps. This is a red. You could place it over here. I also recommend that you place it over the soft box. I just chose to do it this way. Or you can also put the gel attached with clothes pins you could buy at a drugstore. You can do the same thing with very small spring clamps. You can do the same thing with big spring clamps over here. And these are, you know, spring clamps. You just straighten the curve out. And these are spring clamps just to hold up like a foam board or even a, a frame scrim just to soften the light of the strobe out. This is a scrim where you just rest on the strobe. And the scrims come at all sizes. And the one I'm going to use tonight is going to be a really big scrim. You can just lean it against the strobe. This is like a grid to make the light more flattering. Many ways to use gel is one strobe could have a dark color, another strobe could have a light color, maybe red and yellow, or maybe blue and yellow. You can attach two strobe, two gels in a strobe. You can create a cool background with just gels. So, so many props can be used to bring a life to a photograph, get the way you like it. I recommend starting with one light and then adding a prop like a silver card to bounce in light or a white card, or maybe you can, you need another light. I'm gonna check the chat. I don't think there's any questions, but does anyone have any questions? If not, you can always stop and ask me. Well, I've got a question. Um, do, um, this seems like this is for product photography. Do you ever use this technique to photograph um, you know, like small wildlife or flower, you know, nature type photography? Well, you can use a scrim to block out light. You can use, you know, when you're outdoors with the bright sunshine, you probably want to block out the harsh sunlight. Like you put a foam board to block out. Like if you're going to take a portrait outside, that's why they recommend taking a portrait in the shade because you have so much light outside. Mm -hmm. so you can use for outdoor photography, a lot of it. And you can use flash, but I always like to use, you know, natural light first. Okay, I'm gonna move on. You can always stop with questions. Now these are the camera settings. My camera will probably look different with yours and I used to start with aperture 16 with the shutter of 125th. Sometimes you get the exposure I like. I have to cut the shutter in half to 125th. And I usually shoot manual for regular still life or bulb mode for um, light painting. I always shoot you all. And I'm not going to talk, I'm going to have slides that talk about, you know, all these um, settings, you know picture mode, the daylight bounce. I always like to use the single shooting mode or maybe the, you know, exposed timer. I've used all these modes, but for light painting and still life, I just like to use the shooting, you know, the single shooting mode. And I like to use either a cable release or a, or a remote. And I'll talk about that coming up. And for portraits, I like these a 10, you know, for cell portraits, I like these a 10 second exposure and just make, then I would um, use an aperture mode and I would use spot metering. And for outdoor, I would usually use the timer with HDR photography, or I could also use the H high speed continuous. So those, all these modes are good to use.
I like to use evaluated mode. I feel that it brings out the best contrast. Spy beater is great when you're opportunity priority, but you want to focus on portraits where it aims at the face and you lock the exposure and you take the shot. I don't like center weight average metering. I feel like it's not enough contrast as evaluated mode. And then this partial metering where this is great for a lighter background, a really light background. Like if you take a picture of someone outside and you have a bright sky, partial metering could really help get the photograph you like. Where the background is way brighter than the subject, but it also applies to still life where the strobe, power of the strobe firing at the camera is way brighter than the subject. The partial metering can be used, you know, in addition to changing the aperture, can help you get a great photograph. The picture style, I like to use a standard. I like to use a standard picture style. I feel it's the sharpest. Portrait landscape mode, maybe a little softer, but they work well in their special environments. I like that still use the picture style for um, standard picture for black and white. I know some people use monochrome, but I just wanna, I don't wanna affect the pixels, the raw pixels in any way. That's why I just like to do everything either in standard picture style or maybe portrait style. For the focus mode, I recommend the zone autofocus because it focuses on several parts of the photograph, like the middle, like the sides. I prefer this more than the 19 point because this has 19 focus points, but the pixels we set longer, but I know you could be successful with this mode too, but to me, I prefer a zone autofocus. And then their single point focus is you basically move the cursor you want to apply the focus, and spot focus is great for macro photography. You want to focus on a bug. You move where, where you want to focus. And then the other parts are blurry if you use a very, very wide aperture. Now, the white balance is, I like to prefer daylight white balance, but recently I've been setting the white balance, setting the Kelvin to 54K. I've been doing that lately, but I never used AWS auto white balance. Some people call this available wrong balance, but this is the least natural and you're putting in artificial ingredients in the photograph. I know some people like to use AWS, I never. And you can also do a custom white balance is where you take a, you put in a manual focus, you take a picture of a white card and you just set the white balance to the, playing picture. But then if you have to, I just rather just keep the Kelvin at, you know, 54K or just use a daylight setting, the daylight setting. Now for the long exposure noise reduction, for a privately exposed image, zero is best. Maybe you use one, but if you use two, you don't need to, but Two is great for correcting blue color cast with older DSLRs, but today's technology, modern DSLRs do not have this problem, but setting, if you wanna change it, is available if you need it, but I just like to use one or two. I mean, zero or one. And for the high speed, if it's a properly exposed image, uh, use zero. Some people use two, some people use one. I like to experiment, but you should almost really never use two, but you only use two if it's a very high ISO, but with the probably exposed image, I just, I would just maybe disable it or just use zero. My color space. I like to start with RGB. It's 57 billion colors, and then convert it to sRGB, the web RGB, which narrows it down to 16.7 million colors. In the sRGB, it's great for posting on the web, but just don't check off the convert to sRGB when you do a JPEG. 
in Photoshop because you'll have a color profile mismatch problem. But if you want to post it a web, you would check off convert to sRGB. Then there's Profoto. I know a lot of people may start to use Profoto. That's 281 trillion colors, but you know the human eye can only recognize two or three million colors. But technology is advancing, and things are changing. But Profoto is the the biggest color space. But I recommend I like to use the Adobe, starting from Adobe RGB. Then the CMYK, where it's only sixteen thousand colors for printing, but this will be the final conversion when you print. I mean, there's only so much colors you can use. So there's differences in all the color space, the sRGB, the RGB, Profoto, and CMYK. In exposure bracketing, where a lot of times I just use it in three different exposures, one stop over, regular, one stop under. I used to do it with two, but I've been just changing, using it the one because the image that's slightly overexposed will probably have better pixel control than the two underexposed. And one stop bracketing is easier. It's more flexible and it's files are more manageable, but you can do two, but I just like to use one stop apart over and under regular exposure. And I like to use the you know, exposure bracket for outdoor photography. These are the strips I use. The two metal ones are strip boxes, and the ones on the edge are four times more, you know, more powerful than the strip boxes. But the strip box is for a narrow purpose, like a solo product. Then there's non strobe lights where you have the Spider fi Socket 5 Westcott, and then the Fotec seven socket, and these are great or you could control the lights with the switches. With this, the one, the seven, a switch will control the roll of lights. And this is great if you don't need to use flash or you don't want to use flash, you just want to use continuous. This is a great one, you know, flash is not, when the flash is not as easy as continuous, but. These are all my stands where I have, the big tall boom stands come with these two big bags. These small bags are bought at Home Depot, and it's for the other smaller boom stands. And they have, you know, ground stands, three foot stands, six foot stands. So I have many stands. This is one way I use concrete blocks, and I'll talk about concrete blocks later. So these are silver and white reflectors. Now, a white reflector would bounce in light in a soft way, a lot of great for portraiture, but a silver light will bounce lights in a dramatic way. So these are great for bouncing in light with the, you know, without using another strobe. These are snoots. And make sure you use them with the grid and make sure that if you want to fire out color, put the, the small gel behind the lid, the small circular gel piece of paper. It's great if you use it, you know, at a subject at a 40 or 50 angle. And these are seven inch aluminum reflector diffusers where it's great for when you fire a strobe that the aluminum, the metal part will make the light more flattering. It's great for solar products. It's also great for dramatic portraiture. This is some homemade equipment I made from wood that I found, you know, someone didn't want. So I took it and I cleaned it up and I made many small and big still life tables for light painting. And then I made home rack, you know, I made a home, a homemade rack where you could use a background. I used to store this with stands, but you could put a background over the, the poles for a nice background.
These are, you know, black and white cubes. They're great for creating miniature tables. You can have a miniature black plexi, you can have miniature white. And then there are crates for, you know, holding things. Or you can also rest, you can also use a crate to hold up a blonde or black background. This is another way to use concrete blocks where you see the groove of the concrete block. That's where you can rest the foam board. You can also lean it out at 45 degree angle. And these are stools that I made from broken chairs where the arms are falling apart. So I got a parasol, I cut off the arms and these are nice stools. You can make a nice small table with this. You can sit on it, you can stand on it. So in many ways you can use these stools. This is like a floor rack where, you know, I bought a dishwasher. The guy said to throw it away. I say no. So this is how I could put a nice floor light with the stands. And I screwed on this piece of wood. And then this is great for positioning a light under the plexi table you saw in the other photograph earlier. These are black, big black card bees. They're great for blocking a lot of light. And you can also make a room really dark, like for light painting. You can also make a nice dark background in a corner. And I made this, you know, with, you know, stretcher art frames and also plastic um, art paper at Home Depot, at Office Depot, where I got a lot of this in sale. These are expansion poles for holding up a scrim fuse, a frame fusion material. And these are poles like for putting in like that homemade rack where you could, you can have a stand and clamp on the poles for a background. These are all the lenses I use where I like to use the prime lenses. And a lot of times you use the EF35, but for solar products, I could use a 50 meter and a 85 meter. I like the prime lens because they're cheaper, but they're also sharper focused. But the zoom lenses are becoming almost just as good, but they're more money. But then I have two non prime lenses where the 7200, I could do indoors and outdoors. And I'll use that 100 to 400 outdoors for wildlife. Now there's image stabilization. Nikon calls it vibrant reduction. It's best to use this feature without a tripod, but if you use this feature, it's best not to use it because if you use it with the tripod, the image will not probably not process correctly. You could damage the pixels. You could have color shift problems. Then there's you know manual focus and autofocus where for outdoor lighting I like to use autofocus, but for manual focus I like to do a pre autofocus and switch to manual focus. Then there are camera cases, and I bought these at Micro Center. They're great. They're three times less than the cost of the other camera case, other camera cases in other stores. They don't take up a lot of space, they're small, they're compact, and they're very sturdy and tough, they'll last a lifetime. And they're really great to have. We've had this for years. And I have two tripods where one of them is an architect and one of them is a wild nature. One of them, the one on the left, I decided to saw off the um, pole so you could get down on the floor. Then there's, you know, a studio stand, and I use this all the time for my still life photography, where I don't use it with a cable release. And I also put weights to make it secure. This is the wired cable release I've been using for years in my still life photography and also outdoors. 
a lot of times I just use a cable, you know, the wire or the or a remote, and it helps me keep the camera still. And I have a wireless shutter remote where the top part goes in any hot shoe of a camera, and they both operate on two AAA batteries, and it has the timer of the hour, minutes, and seconds. 99 colon 99 colon 99 format. Anything the cable release can do wired, the, the remote can do a lot more. You could light paint a car, it could be, you know, you know, 80 meters away, but I'm only like 15 or 25 feet away. This is the receiver for the you know, Elecom strobes called the L Skyport Transmitter Plus. Could be used within 600 feet. It has 16 channels and four different groups. And it only operates two AA batteries. But you can also use the EX flash of Canon 430. It's a great substitute if the Skyport doesn't work and use it as manual mode to make the strobes a tr transmitter. We have, and this is only four channels, which is a lot less than the other, you know, sky port, the one above. It's in four channels in three different groups, but this takes up a lot more electricity. You could also use it as a flash, but it's four AA batteries. I like the clean, I still have tables with, you know, Novus. I like to just use one in a gentle wipe with a nice lint cloth. Sometimes I use two for scratches or three for scratches. Most of those I just use one. And for the lower part of the slide is um, you have turkey tweezers and lens blower. This is great for blowing up dust on any plex table, especially the black, but you can also blow it up on the white because dust particles will happen. These, you know, the object on the left are just my mirrors, mirror plates and armature clips. The object on the right are my, you know, duct tape and armature wire. And the C clamps are on the left. They come in many sizes, but the spring clamps and closed pits are on the right and they help hold stuff. And they have, you know, Gels, you can buy this at an art store. This is great. And I'll talk about gels a lot in the lab tonight. And then on the right, we have silver cards and gold cards. We have Cinefill, which is great for creating a snoot and a tight budget with you know duct tape, spring clamps. You have draft fusion paper. We can create a background. You can place this over a strobe. These are all my plastic fusion scrims made from structure art frames. You could buy, you know, the plastic fusion material at an art store or BH. This is a pre-built frame. You can you can buy this at Target, and you can buy the fusion paper at an art store. So my plexi sheets are on the right. We have black plexi, white plexi, and clear plexi. This is all great for many size tables. These are my two six foot, six foot scrims where you don't even need a stand, you just rest it on the strobe. And it's just made from hardware wood, like, you know, Home Depot. And it is connected by small L brackets and, it, and I've used these for a while and they work great. You can also create like a, like a background and they're six foot by three foot. These are all my white cards, they come in many sizes. You can use it for a white background. So where you have a light, you could also have a gray background. You could use this for food photography. You can put aluminum foil, to bring out a light more dramatic. And on the right, we have my black cards and they're great for minus cards, also great for like a black background. You can have like a cool brown background, depending where you have the light. 
So now what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to email the, I'm going to now email my link in the chat. of the YouTube Live. I want to email the link, let's see. I'm going to post a link to one of my Facebook groups at YouTube Live Lab. So I'm going to put the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the link in the chat. I know my screen's, you know, paused. So I'm going to post it. Let's see. I'm going to post this link. Post it a few times. 
So now we're about to begin the virtual part of the lab. I'm going to do is screen capturing the photos, the lettering. I'm also going to be jumping back to the other two cameras. Now, you should be able to hear me. What I'm going to be doing, first, I want to talk about some of the lighting modifiers. Have one light. Use a white card for bouncing a light in a soft way. Come in many, many sizes. Use a black card if I want to take out a glare. 
encourages too much life. These are gold cars. It's great for putting in like a yellowish tank for a photograph. Orchard use on this lot. These are, you know, silver cars that are added light in a dramatic way. You know, spray clamps, armature clamps to hold it up. These are clothes pins to attach the gel to the screw. This is Cinefill turning a snoot on a tiny fuzzy. This is, you know, plastic tubes and paper for a strobe, soft leather strobe for a nice background. And these are gels. So it's just going to work with one light. Turn up the light so I control 